Hi, everyone. It's Christoph Chu from the Christoph Chu Real Estate Group in Beverly Hills. And I'm very excited to have my good friend and, and mortgage broker, Mark Cohen from Cohen Financial here to talk to us again today about what's going on in the mortgage industry. I know that's been a really, really hot topic, particularly the last three to six months. And uh, I work with Mark for a very long time, and he's been doing mortgages now for 36 years. And get this, he's done 21,000 mortgages, over 14 billion in loans. And just a quick story, my one of, one of my um, uh, client deals we did together, I had a client, uh, Mark's client as well, and a friend of both of ours that was buying a $10 million house and he was planning to pay cash. And then we opened escrow and he's like, Christoph, I'm gonna get a loan. I'm like, a loan? What do you mean a loan? Um, it was a 10 million major, major fixer. He says, don't worry about it. Mark Cohen's my guy, he's gonna take care of it. Well, Mark got this $10 million property purchase loan approved in five days and we closed. I've never seen a loan get done that quickly. But anyways, I just, I love Mark. He's so good at what he does. And especially, I mean, think about it, 21,000 mortgage loans. I mean, that's someone who knows his stuff. But Mark, tell us a little bit about you and your company and uh, maybe a little bit how you started because sure. you and I never talked about that. We'll start back in uh, how I started is step one. We'll you know make it uh, nice and brief so people aren't... Uh... Uh, bored by it. Uh, out of law school, went to law school for uh, grandparent reasons. You know, you got to be a lawyer, <laughs> doctor, or whatever. Went to law school, graduated, and I didn't want to really practice law. So my mother was the first female mortgage broker uh, in the city. In those days, it was uh, very, um, uh, it was a totally different industry. It was very initial in its in stages. Uh, she was the first female mortgage broker. I worked with her. Um, for, from 1986 to about 1999. And you know, when I first started the business, you know, the Fannie Mae loan limits now are 640,000. It was uh, 109,000. 109,000, so, wow. 109,000, which you can't buy literally anything in the country for that. So the, so the, so it's changed a lot, the whole uh, structure of the, of the business. So I started in 86, 87. It was, uh, you know, sort of love at first sight because, uh, you know, I always liked to, uh, Real estate. My family had been involved with real estate, and you know, and I, you know, it was my major at, uh, at SC was um, finance, and you know, it was it was a perfect match. And I like talking to people and making deals, so it's the closest thing to Wall Street without being on Wall Street for me. <laughs> That's um, true. So, in 1999, started my own company, and um, here we are, 22 years later. So. Uh, I'll, I'll and one of the interesting things going on with mortgages now, I mean, uh, rates dipped down a little bit this week. I think they went back from over four to just back under four for, for loans, correct? Exactly. Yeah, but but it's still a point or so higher than a few months ago. Right. So it, it's interesting, you know, buyers today are so, so short-sighted. It's like, oh my gosh, rates went up from three and a half percent to 4%. And we just closed a deal and the buyer uh, got a loan at like 2.8%. And uh, he said, I wish I would have done this four months ago. I could have got like 2.3%. And I said, you know, you're way too young to understand this because he's only 27 years old. I said, but when I started in the late eighties, I mean, you remember this rates were 16, 17, 18% for a mortgage, right? You remember those exactly days? Right. Exactly right. Yeah. And I, I mean, I was 18 years old, new in the business. I didn't know any, I didn't know rates had been lower. I just, I didn't even know. So yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought in 1987, I first got my first house. I was paying nine and three quarters on a five-year adjustable rate loan. And I thought I was stealing, stealing the deal. <laughs> they were higher. Yeah. yeah. They were, you know, 14, 15, 16% uh, uh, in the early eighties. Exactly. So yeah. nowadays it's just so funny. People are like, Oh my God, 4% is so high. I don't want to buy a house. I mean, first of all, real estate is the number one asset for appreciation Absolutely. ever in the history of the world. Yep. And, and we're still at basically historic lows. And um, look, I've had mortgages at 7%, 8%, 6%. Now it's under three, uh, which is amazing for a jumbo loan. So it just, it's amazing to me um, how short-sighted people are with mortgage rates. And I've always told buyers, I said, look, you know, the mortgage rates are what they are. You need to buy a house. You know, you need the tax deductions. You need to live there. Um, but what's interesting is the last, I would say, month or so, the ARM or adjustable rate mortgage conversation is coming back into play because people are like, well, I'll get an adjustable rate loan instead of a fixed loan. Because most people like generally a fixed loan, right? Right. One thing I want you to talk about is that I always ask my clients, and I, I know you do as well, is, okay, you're buying this house here in LA. What is your current moment plan? Are you planning to be here for five or 10 years and maybe move to a bigger house? Or are you planning to be here 
for 10 years for your job, but you're planning to move back to New York. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you can get a lower rate on a 10 year adjust, I mean, a fix for 10 years and it adjusts after the fact, why not do it? But I think that's part of why you're so good is that you really counts your clients and, and how do you do that? Like what questions do you ask someone and to help them, to help guide them? Because we're guiding our clients. First in, in buying houses with interest rates and so forth, you know, yes, uh, you know, they've gone up and, you know, you had to ask them, you know, where do you think, uh, how long you'll be living in the house for your game plan so you can try and go on a short term loan? Right. At the same point in time though, you know, I always ask, how's your business? Because that's the, the whole thing. So if your business, if, if you're expecting your business to grow by, you know, 25% and your payments are 5% higher, it really is a moot point. So people will have to get focused on the big picture. It's like with everything in life, it's like, can I afford this? It's not like whether you're paying 5,000 or 5,500 a month on your mortgage. It's right. like, how is my business uh, doing? And right. I, am I going to be making more money? So, I mean, I, I think it's the first thing because anybody should be buying a house should feel comfortable that they're going to be able to, you know, have the reserves and be able to buy a house com comfortably and not have to, you know, worry about a few hundred extra dollars per month. Yeah. And that's actually a good question. One of the questions I had for you is that reserves. Let's say you're buying a $2 million house okay. and your mortgage payment is going to be, uh, let's say, $7,000 a month. Um, first of all, I've always advised clients, maybe it was wrong or right, and I'd love to hear your thought that I always thought, look, people can get loans again nowadays for 10% down, I think. I haven't done right. any. Yeah. Um, um, but I always felt like if, if you, and I haven't, didn't say it quite this way, but I think if you're buying a house, you need to have at least 20% down. That's just kind of my, yeah. and think if really. you don't have 20% down, should you really be buying a house? And then secondly, for me, I tell them, I know banks will approve you with like three, four, five months of reserve. I tell people, look, you should always have at least a year's reserve, in my opinion, in the bank, right. your mortgage taxes, insurance, so that, you know, in life, things happen. You could have an illness. You could have a family. Absolutely right. You just don't know what's going to happen. Like who, who knew, you know, when COVID started that all these restaurants and all these other right. superfluous businesses were going to close. Yes. And uh, even today, and, you know, not that it applies here, but all the poor people in, in the uh, Ukraine, I mean, or in Russia for that matter, you know, their lives got just taken away from them from a, yeah. from a, uh, a not sane person. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, you got always, you got to play defense on this stuff here. So look, you can, you know, 90% loans, I'm doing a loan for an attorney. She makes a lot and she's going through a divorce and she's got a year's worth, I mean, you know, on a two and a half million dollar purchase, she's got about, you know, three payments to the bank, but she goes, I really just want to put down 10%. So I got the deal for her. So right. it all depends on everybody's, you know, risk perception and how secure right. they would be with cash. Right. But you're right though, um, uh, Christoph, you know, a, a year's worth of payment, I agree with you, is is the, the customary norm, especially on jumbo loans, 20% down, but there's not a big difference that much any longer if it's 10% down or 20% down. Right. Up to certain up to rates and the qualifications and all that, you mean? It's about the same. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's, well, you got to, you know, qualify with that extra debt. And, you know, some people, some banks, you know, want uh, 85% is no problem up to $3 million. Right. 90% uh, loans, it's the cutoff is for the better right. rates is, is $2 million. Yeah. And it's interesting also, I mean, as you know, in our market in Beverly Hills, a lot of people do like to pay cash. Right. Um, however, the last, you know, three, four years, most of them are not paying cash. They're just getting a loan because first of all, I mean, they can borrow it, you know, 2.8, 3%, 4%. And then, you know, smart businessmen can make their real money work for them at 10, 15, yeah. maybe 20%. So, right. um, uh, so it, it, it always, it's interesting to me how, how the markets are always changing. Um, you know, the feds are talking about they're expecting to continue to raise interest rates this year. And I think I heard the other day on the radio, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that potentially there could be six rate increases over the next 12 months. What do you see? Well, you know, to say defensive, like a lot of people on CNBC are saying, it's hard to say there's going to be six increases. You know, right. nobody knows. I'll tell you the reason why. You know, the world changes quickly and uh, you, know, you don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, let's say, for example, on this past week, you know, obviously the rate should be increased. We've got rampant inflation and primarily now it's going to be compounded by the fact about the price of oil. I mean, it's out of sight. I mean, I just <laughs> driving past the station I go to or I drive by all the time and it's over $7. I know. Uh, I couldn't believe that. And, you know, look, can I afford it or whatever? I mean, yes, but it's a lot of money. So it's, it's, it hurts a lot of people and it's going to translate 
over to FedEx deliveries, food deliveries, everything. Right. So there's going to be inflation in this country. At the same point in time, though, um, you know, the Fed's mandate is to have uh, 2% inflation, and that's not nearly where we're at right now. So they have to use their quote unquote tools, and that's raising rates. Um, and their other mandate that they have is to have a strong employment market, which we do now. The, you know, today it came out the uh, Fed had uh, 476,000, no, 676,000 new jobs uh, in the month of February, which is, you know, brisk. Uh, the only saving grace for that from a bond market standpoint and why rates are down a little bit today is one, because of Ukraine and also and a really important part the market looks at, and it's very important, is the wages. So the wages were expected to go up half percent on the average is flat, which to me, it's, it's important because, uh, you know, that's the wage inflation is the, the whole key component to inflation, uh, a big, big part of it. So that was a, a positive sign. And and I don't, another reason I, I you can't say six, a lot of the, cons, you know, the economic numbers are, so, are softening. Another one that came out report yesterday, it's called the Chicago Purchasing Managers Index, you know, about how their industrial sector is doing with, with the national one. It, it, was, it was much lower than expected. So you're starting to see some uh, 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 slow down the economy on the superficial level and consumer sentiment is at a, uh, like a 10 year low. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, you gotta let the things work through the process. Yeah. The Fed's definitely raising rates in March. And, you know, and I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised like another one or two after that, then you'll see. Because if the inflation issue, supply chain issues uh, is ameliorating at that point in time, then there probably won't be any time. So, you know, they're, they're buying time, the Fed's buying time, but they have to raise rates to maintain any kind of credibility. Because, I mean, you have, you have <laughs> go to a restaurant, go any place. I mean, it's, it's higher. I mean, it's just, Everything uh, is more expensive. Yeah. The other day at, at one of our local restaurants, which I know you go to, uh, Jidori chicken was $68 for a Jidori chicken. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's I remember you being 40 something the last time I, yeah, I no, it's not high enough. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's out there. You don't have to go too far to see it and everything. Exactly. So, we need to raise our mortgage rates. We need to raise our commission. I need, I need to raise what may raise my fees, which I, I, which I can't do. <laughs> I'm fair. I'm happy just to help people out. So exactly. It's like, so I remember last year, the Fannie Mae. The volume lender here. Yes. GPs. Last year, I think Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the National Mortgage Association all predicted rates this year to be in the upper threes, lower fours, which seems like that's kind of where we're going. And yeah. of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Do you think rates could potentially by the end of the year go up two points? I mean, could it go up that quickly? That I don't, I don't think so, because okay. I think a lot of it's baked in the cake right now. We have oil now at 112, one, you know, 110, 113, whatever it is. Barrel I saw that the night at 114 at night in the evening. Wasn't it wasn't at $80 a barrel three months ago? Yeah, so look, it's already baked into the cake. You know, I think you're going to see the this slow down the economy and so forth. And I think the supply chain issues uh, will improve. So I just think the inflation expectations will go down a bit where the Fed can justify not raising rates maybe after two or three times. Yeah. Because you know, look, that, if that happens, you know, you're into July already. And, you know, like like you and I know the world can just change. So it, it's hard to say. Exactly. So everybody's saying seven times. Come on. It's just, you know, it's just maybe they're right. But, you know. At this point in time, any reasonable person, knowing the way the the the, the economies change and perceptions of the world changes, and you, know, you can't go out and say that. But you know, yeah, we'll, see. well, you know, I love to sell houses, and, and I know luckily for you, you can sell a house or you can refinance. But I do advise some clients because a lot of people you don't want to sell, right? And right. I tell I, I do videos and I tell clients like if you refinanced a year and a half, two years ago refinance again because the rates are lower and it's worth the time and the effort. I know it's, it can be a little, little yeah. bit of a process, but you know, when you think you can save potentially, you know, if the rates are a point less than what it was a couple of years ago for you, that's pretty substantial in a mortgage. Pretty yes, substantial. It is. So uh, I think it's important about that. Um, what are, what, what are the thoughts you have about like, what are the best, loans today are there particular programs or loans well, it's no, surprisingly not. enough that the the jumbo loans are much better priced than the fanny and the fanny made the agency paper loans really but for example i can get uh on a five million dollar loan amount three and a quarter on a 30 year fixed rate at 75 percent five now, million dollar six, loan three yeah. and a quarter percent wow yeah. that's a jumbo loan now if i yeah. like everybody else the uh, i want to go through a, a quicken or a, on a fanny made loan you know up to uh it was now 973 the rates like three and three quarters three and seven eight so what's happened is the government wants out of the mortgage market 
So they're having these, uh, and, and the, how the mortgage market's funded is by the government, the Federal Reserve, uh, or uh, buying bonds. So now they're, they're stepping foot out of the market and there's no, a lot less demand for their products. So therefore rates are going up. And they announced that you know, a couple of months ago, you know, they're not buying mortgage uh, bonds at this, they're, they're, they're going to discontinue it. That's a much reduced level than it was before. So that's raising the rates. Why is, does the government no longer want to do mortgage loans? Um, try to stay on the real estate market. And they're trying to reduce the balance sheet and uh, they want uh, to have the market act on its own. They think it's strong enough. It's not their mandate to keep on buying more. Just got, it, got it, got it. So they think the market can support higher interest rates. They did this initially to stimulate the economy and all that right. years ago. Yeah, now, they're just, now, they're, now that it's doing better, they want to step back. But if things might, you know, with inflation and costs of living going up and everything, wouldn't they stay for a little bit longer or no, they want to do other things with the I money? think the economy is strong enough. It's part of the process is to, to you know, raise rates is by draining the, the, uh, the capital system. I see. Creating less demand. So there's less housing demand. You have less contractors working on houses. It's like the whole thing to slow down the economy. Right. Whether it's right or wrong, I mean, it, it will work, but, uh, you know, it, it will you know, change at some point in time. And just as a rule of thumb, if if I'm doing a purchase loan and secondly, or a refinance loan, let's say I'm borrowing a million dollars. Okay. As a consumer on a purchase side, what should I expect to pay percentage wise overall for the loan, appraisal fees? Is it? I'll just give you a typical deal. Let's say a client's buying a house, gets a million dollar loan from us. It's jumbo right. loan. Yeah. 30 year fixed rate, three and a quarter. Uh, you know, it's got to be full, a solid was full income documentation. We'll go over the other, other programs in a second. So it's full income documentation, you know, you know ratios 45%, zero points, you know, thousand dollars for loan docs, appraisal. So lender fees are about two thousand dollars. I get paid from very the bank. minimal. Very yeah, minimal. It's, a, it's a good deal. Yeah. Now that's you know for prime borrowers with tax returns and qualifying 45% yeah. ratios. If not, that's so I always tell my clients there's three types of loans. So one, the best rates are like I just discussed with you. Tax returns, two years returns, ratios 45, good credit. Full documentation loans, right. right. Exactly, full doc. And better, better price. Let's just use that as a three and a quarter reference. Yeah. Option number two is uh, bank statement loans. You showed uh, for self-employed people, 12 or 24 months bank statements. And uh, those rates are in the, in the uh, right now, the high fours on those. And that's where for people who are self-employed, who have got good credit scores, who have a good cash flow in their business, but they don't declare everything they make. Ah. Got it. Uh, and that, so that's so you pay a, a tax or premium, but it's those types of door loans have opened up the doors and they're extremely popular right now because it provides financing to a large segment of, of self-employed people. Right. Who, you know, don't who can get away or have proper tax planning where they don't they can reduce their uh, tax liability. Right. It's a more it's like a, it's a, like a mortgage tax. To yeah. degree, but it's, it works out now. Um, the third one. Which is coming out? It's coming out. Which is a little bit even higher rate. It's where uh, if you have strong assets uh, and five years payments in the bank, for the most part, you get a loan. You have five, to show, five years uh, worth. Five years. Yeah. Then you have to show. Any, you don't have to show uh, for the better rates. You have to show uh, bank statements. So if you have a million in the bank and your payments ten, I mean, or even a million dollars in the bank. You can get a loan if you know the payments are five, six thousand dollars a month, and if you're not working or you get paid in cash, you have to show any deposits. So right. you, it's it's pretty easy to get a loan for people to fit within the box. You know, obviously, the assumption is based on, on good credit and you know, yeah. doing the right thing. So depending on your the job situation, it, it can be tailored. Yeah, and I know for me, most of my higher end clients. Uh, own their own businesses. They're, they're all basically self-employed. Now there's right. a few corporate CEOs and executives that are on payroll, but I would say a majority of them are self-employed. Right. I've been my, you know, most yeah, especially with people with real estate and so forth. Yes. But I always do, as you know, full documentation loans. It may take a little bit longer, but I always felt, look, if you got the money, you got the assets, you provide the documentation, you get the best opportunities. That's always been my take on things. Right? Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, to save a thousand dollars a month, I mean, you know, over, you know, whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years, potentially, or 30 years, that's, that's a tremendous savings to do that. Absolutely. It adds up. No, no, no doubt. If you can go full doc, uh, that's it. Uh, that's the way to go. But I noticed, but it, that, you know, maybe two, three years ago, full doc was much more difficult. The last 12 months, 
easier and then six months easier. Have you noticed that as well? Yeah, I mean, look, banks want to lend, uh, but uh, you know, they have to have you know the big banks. They don't do these loans that are called non-QM loans without tax returns. So, you know, the what banks, you, especially QM, what's a QM system, loan? What's a, I don't know what that it's is. A, not, it's called non-qualified mortgage. So those not, are the those are the bank saving loans we spoke about. Ah, got it. Okay, those are, got it. Those, so that, there's a, and that's a huge market uh, on that. Yeah. So uh, for the non-QM loans, uh, it's increased in popularity. I mean, it's really helped the, the whole real estate market by opening up uh, loans for people who normally couldn't get, get loans. Got it. So, Got it. Um, yeah, you're right, though, um, Christoph. The, the market is open up a little bit, especially if you have banking relationships with with uh, the bank. If you have a uh, you know five hundred thousand or a million dollars with a, a bank, you know, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> And you've got ten, five or ten million in the bank with, and then they're not going to give you a mortgage. You got that much cash in their bank. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, so they'll bend out of their ways to to to, uh, to do it. Yes. For sure. Um, what what if, you know? First time buyers in our market here in LA are typically maybe one eight to two million, unless it's a condo. Condos maybe in the lower one million range, but pretty sad but true, isn't it? It it is true. I mean, God Almighty, when you think about that, I mean. But it is what it is. I mean, we're we're lucky to be in Beverly Hills, LA, yeah. one of the best places in the world. So you got to pay to play. <laughs> what they say, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, in the game because the first time buyer. Um, and look, a lot of my first time buyers in that price range, today's world, they, they may or may not have the cash, but they have uh, gifts from family because there's a lot of uh, transitional wealth. The parents yep. and family have money, Absolutely. and they gift it to the kids. So how common is is a is a gift from the parents? To get a mortgage, is it twenty percent, fifty percent of the time? Uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's very uh, common. Okay. So on the better price loans, um, if it's a twenty percent down payment, uh, it can be hundred percent gift. Really? Wow. Now, the only requirement is this: is that the reserves, which are typically you know twelve months, like let's just say, right, to your own uh, reserves. So it can't be. It can't be. Uh, so they want to see that you've been able to contribute or been able to save money. So, so yeah. you're buying a $2 million house. Mom and dad can give you the 400 grand down payment, but the bank wants to check. You have the, the hundred or $150,000 in the bank, in your bank accounts. And that can also be 401k, like you use 60% of your 401k. So, you know, most people have that. They're, so a bank will, will allow you 60% quote unquote value for your 401k. So you've got 200,000 in your 401k. They will give you a credit of 60% of that value towards your qualifying income or qualifying cash. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So that, so that, so yeah, you know, it makes it a little bit easier and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So wow, I I, did, I wasn't aware of that particular thing because again, you know, it's tough. Like we talked about, it's tough today to buy a two million dollar house. Very hard. And it's, it's very a lot hard. of people don't have four or five hundred thousand in the bank. Plus, Especially a young uh, couple is starting off. Yeah. yeah. And plus no, four thousand in reserves. That's that's not exactly easy for anybody. Yeah. That's exactly right. No, that's. Uh, it's a challenge and it's, you know, it's in most of these people, you know, have, you know, really good jobs and make money. It's their first house. You think, you know, you know, I'm, I'm saying $2 million on a house, first house, which is a lot of money. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. 99% of the world or yeah. in this country and, you know, you, you can't find anything. I mean, it's exactly it's frustrating for a lot of people, this housing market, exactly. very frustrating. So if, if a buyer's thinking, okay, I want to buy in the next year or two, um, mm -hmm. you know, we anticipate properties, prices increasing. Uh, mm -hmm. We anticipate mortgage rates increasing, uh, but they're not quite ready now. What should they do to prepare themselves? Well, I mean, I'm happy to talk to all the clients and saying, hey, Mark, we're buying a year. Just get a little, get them a little game plan, what they're going to need to do. And, uh, you know, if they're going to have to be a little more aggressive on their tax returns or not be just have more deposits going to their business account. So I think just a, a, a quick uh, conversation see where the credit score is, just have a little a game plan that that saves a lot of time and potential aggravation later on. I agree. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, you're into sports, I know. So you talk about game plans and, you know, really planning. And that's so important in any aspect of real estate. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you know, having that first consultation, I know you're willing, as big as you are, you take the time with buyers uh, yes. and talk to them about how to do that, how to prepare themselves for whether it's three months, six months, 12 months down the road, or even longer. Sure. I mean, sometimes... And it's longer. Yeah, I, I love to help people, and 
you know, it pays, it pays for itself. Obviously, I'm economically driven. I run this as a for-profit business, but it's, it's the right thing to do, you know, it's just to help people out. And it, there's a lot of satisfaction. Uh, so question for you. Um, I'm a homeowner. I don't really want to sell my house. Uh, I maybe refinanced the last couple of years, or maybe I didn't. Um, based on the rates today, at what percentage, like if I have a loan in my house as an advisor, I mean, of course, the specifics of your income and all that are different. But if you're if, like, if you said, see a buyer, anyone who's over a rate of, is it 5%, 4.5%, 6%, at what rate you're like, oh, you got to refinance? Like, is there a number like, or it doesn't work like that? I mean, there's a whole host of questions, but it just depends. But yeah, you know, typically right now, we're, you know, it's not a really great time to refinance unless you have, a, you know, your loan, you have an adjustable loan that's about to adjust or, um, you know, you need to pull cash out. A lot of people are pulling cash out of their houses now. Why is it not a good time to refinance? Yeah, because most people who have, uh, have refinanced already, you know, for, ah. for the most part. But don't you think there's, there's maybe 10, 20% of the market that's, that's got loans at five, maybe five and a half, six? Yeah, that's five. fine. But there's, there's usually a reason why they're in, in the five. So they have to go back to. Oh, because maybe they don't have the income today yeah. that they did when they got the yeah. loan. Yeah, so got it's it. typically a bank statement loan. So, and that takes you down to the high fours of five. So, ah. you know, it, it all, there's, that's why there's so many factors. There's, you can't say it's a general rule of thumb. But if you can qualify for a loan, you're at four, four and a half, then you know, with tax returns and good reason to refinance. But I just find there's, there's, there's a lot fewer of those people out, but I am doing a lot of loans where people are pulling cash out because they're going to stay in their house and, right. you know, and, uh, you know, want to do some construction projects on their house. So it's very popular to pulling cash out. Of their um, I've never had anyone do a reverse mortgage. I, I'm assuming you don't do reverse mortgages, right? I do them They're I don't really recommend it for people because they're very no. expensive in the sense, right. uh, you know, about 7%. Yeah, and the costs are high, and it's just it's just if you can avoid it, it it's not. So um, you know, one of those other loans, the third option I told you about, it's yeah. probably better. Yeah, but, it's but, funny because yeah. on the radio in the morning I'll, I'll hear like I guess oh you got to do a a, a a reverse mortgage. You can pull you know they scare people. They said oh inflation is rampant, gas prices are high. Yeah, you have a fixed income. Do a reverse mortgage. You got. All this money coming in and all and you can pull more money out as equity builds but it, it, that's kind of scary it, it, no it works for people but it, i mean it works it, it does have provide a valuable avenue for people same point in time it's expensive but you know you got to pay for what you get you know sometimes you know unfortunately we all get older and your income goes down over time but they're sitting on a great assets worth two and a half million dollars there's no loan so yeah you know if you're 80 years old you know and you don't have you know kids that are going to can support you um, you now you have this vehicle and it, it makes sense. You know, it, it's just, it's there to aid. You just gotta, you know, just get in a situation and have a, a real good, uh, advisor attorney look at, look out uh, for you. Cause there's some different, uh, situations that, are, that don't work out favorably for them. And that's, what's so important. I mean, as a real estate broker, you as a mortgage broker or an attorney, I think, I mean, first of all, real estate is quite often one of the largest assets. Oh, absolutely. A, a normal person has. I mean, maybe yes. they have stocks and bonds, but usually the equity or your properties are your biggest asset. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what's so important. One of the reasons I, I love you and what you do is that you take the time to really not just, oh, let's just make get you a loan, get you a loan. A lot of, you know, there's a lot of mortgage brokers. Out, I shouldn't say that. Uh, there are mortgage brokers out there that just want to do business, but it's, it's yes. not that for you. We all do. Everybody does. Yeah, look, we all want to make money. We all have families to support and our own mortgages to pay and, and staff to pay. But uh, what I really think is so amazing about you is that you really take the time to really care about people and help them, whether or not you're getting a refinance or not. You just, you take time to talk with them and counsel them. Just, you know, you know, you call an attorney, you got to pay them for a quick, you know, hour meeting, you know, initial yeah. meeting, right? But you and me, we don't charge for that. Maybe no. we should with inflation, right? <laughs> That's all right. Our time is worth money like everyone else, but we know we get it on the back end, obviously. So any advice you have for uh, first-time buyers or potential refinancers or you know, second, third, fourth-time buyers, anything you want to share with the, the, the world out there right now about the... the well, the, the world's constantly changing right now with the rates are... are changing that's going to talk to somebody you know who isn't going to charge you anything and i you know what i can accomplish or you can accomplish in 
you know, five or 10 minute conversation can really lay the foundation for uh, good things down the path. That's true. So, you know, just I'll, I'll basically what I ask is uh, if you're refinancing, for refinancing, what's the value of your house? Uh, what do you owe your rate? You know, what do you do for a living? What's your credit score? You know, should I refinance? You know, yes or no. And I'll see what I can do. And, you know, and you don't have to start emailing me applications or anything. Just talk. You get it really for five minutes. You get you can get a lot done. Yeah. So, and one thing about FICO scores, which, you know, FICO scores are such an important factor in getting loans, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us, or I think many people today have, they pay the monthly fee to Experian or to, uh, you know, different apps that, you know, or, or even your bank, like Bank of America does it for free, like every few days or every week, they'll send me, here's your current credit score. Mm -hmm. But the reality is those apps and those scores are not really they're not, the scores. They're not indicative of what uh, is used. The ones that we use are the residential credit reports, and those are the ones that count. Right. So the other ones you get uh, from B of A or wherever, they don't mean anything. I mean, and there could be a big gap. I mean, you could have a, a B of A and Experian email that says you're at 820, 840, and then you apply for a refinance and all of a sudden you're like at 790 or 780 and you're like, what? Wait a minute. I mean, you, and you show your market like, wait a minute, look, my score is here. No, it's not the same, but is that think, different, different criteria. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but I, and I would say, well, you're Experian, they're Experian. Yeah, but it's a different thing. So, but I think, you know, Obviously, they make money on the fifteen dollars monthly fees, right. right? So they just have so, a very generic one that they use. Exactly. Oh, and that's a, another question, kind of before we finish. So I think sometimes borrowers may be concerned, like, yeah, I'm thinking I'd like to refinance or buy a house. They're afraid that if they pull, if they pull the credit score with you on a kind of a pre-qual or pre-approval, does that affect their credit? Not for residential mortgage credit report. Okay, so if they're opening accounts at Saks. Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's, or retail establishments, that does affect your score. But for residential, you're allowed three in a month. Well, because there'd be, there'd be, it's like through three, basically. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Wow. So there would be, be no the reason, uh, you know, that. yeah, so you're not penalized for that. So, you know, people are panicked by that. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, I'd rather have my score done to see what, if there's any problems that I don't know about, or, right. um, and just know where, where you're at, what you need to work on. So, and I'm going to make a quick comment and then I want to ask you a, a mortgage horror story. So, um, how often have you had buyers in escrow? They're ready to close and they go lease a new car or buy a new car just before closing, right? And then it throws everything off, right? Yeah, that's, right? that's for sure. Yeah, I always well, tell them pretty much, pretty much people know now they've, they've learned, uh, for the most part not to, uh, they, they ask now, believe it or not, very few of those, and uh. I think there's very few, but there still are some that. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah, oh yeah. People, don't, <laughs> yeah. Or they they own another property. They bother not to tell us about it. It screwed up a deal the other day. And I'm mad at the guy. He's a long term client. He didn't tell me he owned another property, and didn't show uh, the application. And when the bank ran their uh, fraud guard, um, you know there was there there was uh, it showed, and let alone the fact there are two more slates on the on the deal. So that wasn't oh, so in his application, he didn't because you have to list all of your assets. It, it, and this, this bank doesn't report through the credit bureaus. Oh. So there was no way to know until he did the fraud, fraud guard. And, you know, I mean, I got close in the other bank, but, you know, it changed the program around a little bit. You know? Right. And the rates are going to be higher, obviously. Yeah. You got, you know, you got to, you got to communicate with people. That's a, the, the main thing. Just communicate. Whether it's good or bad, in it's anything gonna... in life, whether it's a, a business relationship with your staff or your clients or your spouse your kids it's all about communication absolutely i agree with you i mean you know it just poses it, it just reduces problems later on it's gonna it's gonna come out so let's communicate anything in life you know yeah. and you feel better when you say the truth i i do and I we know. all have our things so i you know i'm just as guilty as anybody else so you know you gotta just say it so to end this on kind of a funny clever note so what's the most interesting unique or craziest mortgage experience you've had in your 36 year career well, uh, one of the six out, I was in uh, Africa, South Africa, on a safari with my family uh, 12, 13 years ago, and I had a really important deal. It was a good sized deal, but it was for good clients, business manager, and uh, I, there were time frames that this had to close. So we were in uh, South Africa late in the day, and they specifically tell you at the uh, uh, where you're staying, because you're staying in uh, open air huts, if you will. Right, right. Once it gets dark, 
you don't uh, go out without somebody. Because the wild animals, right? Right, exactly. I mean, you're, yeah, you got the whole crew, the big fives. You know, <laughs> so, so I had to make this call and there was nobody around. So they had, this is in a really remote part of South Africa. Uh, where they had like a uh, international, my phone didn't work because I, I lived on my phone. You had a satellite phone. Yeah, satellite phone. So, uh, you know, I was on the phone for 15, 20 minutes and like, uh, and it's sort of dark outside when I got done. It was just like, it was, it, it was our summertime, their wintertime in the Southern Hemisphere. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know n- nothing happened, obviously. I wouldn't be here, but, you know. I ran back really fast. <laughs> was there a mountain? Did you hear mountain lions roaring or? No, they were out. No, they, uh, there were, when you came back from uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the tours during the day, uh, outside there were uh, cougars and yeah. uh, leopards and the whole thing outside your room. So you had to walk with the uh, security guards and not, you can go oh, out yeah. at night by yourself. Oh, oh, so yeah. that was the thing. So it probably wasn't too, wasn't just too smart. And you know, just wrap it up in a second. You hear that, especially at the week before we were there. Right. Some brilliant guy got out of uh, his car, uh, out of the Range Rover, you know, where they do the tour, and just you know, uh, take pictures. And uh, guess what? Never showed back up. You're kidding me! Whoa. So, yeah. So you know, that was one thing. But uh, you know, no, that was one one thing. You know, a lot of deals are the same. But uh, it's fun. I every I like you know. Um, the communication and me, I met a lot of my best friends through this business here. There were, you know, initial clients. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's a fun thing every single day. It's I you. Nice. Well, Mark, uh, first of all, I appreciate you coming on again on this Anytime. podcast and interview to help educate people about mortgages. If ever you want an introduction to Mark, please call me. I'm happy to introduce you or follow Cohen Financial uh, online or just Google Mark Cohen, Cohen Financial on Google. Yep. Um, 21,000 loans, 14 billion. I love that. And yet you have the heart and soul, like you're just starting out and you and, and you do care. And I know that. Exactly. Every day, zero, zero. So I set goals for myself every day. That's hey, another sports uh, analogy. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Look, you look at the most successful players, people, that, you know, or business, like, look, look at here. One last thing. Warren Buffett, that guy's the richest guy in the world, right? Doesn't need to work. I need to work, you know, quite frankly. Me too. <laughs> but <laughs> we all need to work. I mean, I'm not in that nearly, not nearly the situation. But you know what? He has a passion for it. And it's not the money, it's just the game. Yeah. And if you have, if you like what you do in life and your business, it makes it a lot easier. I agree. And, uh, and the agree. reward's better. So it's, you know. And it's yeah. obvious you like what you do and you're a great human being. You have a lovely family. Uh, it's been so nice to know you all these years and yeah. B- vice versa. You guys. I'm, I'm very grateful for you and thankful. And again, thank you for the time. We'll see this yet again. I'll talk and, to you soon. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Mark. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.